<laughs> you can, well, it's sort of like sideways. Like this? Yeah. yeah. yeah All right. Like Um, hi, Mr. Ramos. Hello. Um, question number one. What movie made you cry the most? I don't think there's been a movie that has made me like cry where like I'm bawling, but like uh, where I wanted to tear up. I think recently, Coco, I think several times throughout the movie, I definitely wanted to cry, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> what dumb thing did you believe in for a really long time? That climate change was not real. That it was not man-made. What's your dream vacation? I was going to say that the earth was flat, but... <laughs> <laughs> What's your dream vacation and who would you take with you? Uh, a dream vacation would be like backpacking through Europe and visiting different countries. I'd probably my family, my daughters, my wife. If I could, if it was, so I could take anybody? Yeah. Yeah, my family. What's your biggest regret in life so far? Um, I guess one regret that I have would be, um, so I had an opportunity to work on my master's and I had to choose between doing a master's in history versus education. I ended up not doing it in history. So I think that's one of the regrets is that I, I should have done my master's in history instead of just doing it in, ed in education. What inscription do you want on your gravestone? Um, Probably like, here lies Rafael Ramos, grandfather, father, husband, and history teacher. Aww. Who inspires you to be a better person? Like an epoch. I think just ordinary people, working class people who just are on a daily basis struggling to support for their families and just trying to make ends meet. I think that's, you know, who, ins that's who inspires me to, to continue to work hard and, and just to be a good person. What makes you say, what was I thinking when you look back in life? Probably getting married way too young. I think that was probably the one thing. But I mean, you know, there's other things that make me say that, but I, I think that that one is the big one. What's your favorite vacation memory from when you were a child? Just going to Mexico. My parents would always, every summer, they'd, they'd send us to Mexico for the summer to stay with my grandparents and just uh, probably going to the to the rancho with my grandfather and doing all the things you would do on a farm, milking the cow. Throwing rocks, climbing trees. And planting crops and things like that and him hitting me if I wasn't doing it properly. <laughs> uh, I think those are probably the, the memories that I cherish the most. Which book or movie do you think is ridiculously overrated? Uh, I'm gonna say The Hunger Games. Probably the movies more than the book. The book was definitely better. But for me, I, after reading the Harry Potter series, there's probably nothing that can compare. And I think when I was introduced to The Hunger Games, they're like, oh, it's sort of like on par with it. And, and then I read the series and I, I didn't think it was. So I would say, yeah, The Hunger Games. <laughs> If a psychic could tell you what would happen in the future, what would you want to know? I just would want to know if my daughters are going to be okay. Uh, you know, they're going to be happy in life, they're going to be decent people, and that's probably what I would want to know. Do you hold grudges or forgive easily? I forgive easily. I think I do. My wife might disagree, but <laughs> I think <laughs> I forgive easily. What will your last meal be? So my favorite food is pizza, and... I'd probably want like an extra large pizza. Uh, there's a place in San Francisco called Escape from New York and they have like a chicken pesto pizza mm -hmm. that I really love and so that would probably be my, my last meal. If you could have one power, what would it be? Uh, if I could have a power, um, I don't know. Um, I guess I'm not really into having powers. Um, I haven't thought about it. Um, being able to control the weather. I don't know. <laughs> storm, right? Isn't Storm uh, mm -hmm, yeah. a character from X-Men? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess that, that would that. I hadn't really thought about it. What differences do you see in the morning students versus your afternoon students? <laughs> uh, so in the morning, you have students coming in late. They're barely awake. They're just... 
um, still half asleep, so not not really into wanting to share or discuss or things like that. Um, I'd say after lunch, you have some students that just ate and have all the sugar in the system and they want to share and they, they participate more, they, they just have more energy. And then, I mean, you have still some that are like in a food coma, <laughs> but definitely the energy level is, is different between, um, you just put on the table, the energy level, I would say, between the morning and the after lunch or afternoon classes. What should they teach in high school but don't? What should they teach in high school? Um, I don't know. Um, there's certain things that, not that you have to know, but there's things that you're gonna experience as an adult that maybe you didn't think about when you were a teenager. You know, just like interpersonal relationship stuff, like, you know, um, at some point, you know, you're, you're gonna be independent and you're gonna have your own family and your own household. And so your your relationship with your family is gonna change. And I think, so maybe, maybe something teaching like how relationships change over time, whether it's your relationship with your parents, your relationship with your siblings, things like that. So like interpersonal relationships and, and how relationships change. What makes a good day at school? When, when students are interested in the lesson, when, you know, they're asking questions, when it seems like they like, you know, the, the topic that I might be covering, uh, I, I think that usually defines for me if it was a good day or not, is how much the students liked the lesson and, and they took something away from it. What's the best and worst part about being a teacher? I think the best part is, is that it's rewarding. So you have students that will thank you for doing a good job, who said, oh, you, you inspired me. I think all that is, is what makes teaching great, is it's rewarding in that sense. Getting to know so many people, you know, so many students come through my classroom and just building those relationships. And getting to talk about something that I, that I personally enjoy in my personal life. Um, the worst part is, you know, having staff meetings, those sort of things, all the staff meetings, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. If you could pass on any wisdom to your students, what would you share? Just to work hard, no matter what life throws at you, no matter what situation you're in. Usually what is what is going to help you overcome or what's gonna make the difference is, is just how hard you're willing to work at whatever it might be to overcome a challenge in your life and you know your personal life and your career and in school. I, I believe that that hard work is, is what makes a difference and just having a strong work ethic. What's your favorite part about being a dad? I think it, it, everything about it. Um, seeing my daughters grow and their personalities develop and just always, you know, trying to challenge myself and challenge them to be better people and me be a better father. Just all that, just, it, it gives you meaning, you know, having having children gives you meaning in life, or at least for me it does. Um, so there, there isn't one specific thing, I think just the, the whole process, just everything about it is is great. What's the longest you've ever had your hair? Uh, my hair is curly. Like if I were to grow it out, it's like super curly. So I've had it grown out probably to like my shoulders, probably like this long. I mean, it's hard to say because it gets really curly. I don't know if I had strained it out, I don't know how long it would have been, but that that's usually, well, that was the longest I've ever had it. Yeah, it's probably like shoulder. Probably like, <laughs> well, I mean, if I strained my knot, it might have been longer than yours. <laughs> now the real question, can you tell us about the band you were in, Over the Counter Intelligence? I mean, what do you guys want to know about it? <laughs> How you got in, what you did, when was this? It started like my senior year in high school. Um, so I had a couple friends who started playing the guitar and started just getting into music. They were into music a lot more than I was. And uh, they eventually said, well, let's start a band. And they're like, you want to play? And I'm like, I don't know how to play. You know, I had never played an instrument before. I wasn't that passionate about me, just music in general, but they needed somebody. And so um, I said, okay. And they 
taught me how to play. And so that's kind of how it happened. So then it was, so my senior years when it started and then um, it continued probably until I was a junior in college. So maybe like three, four years. We just mostly played like house parties and things like that. Um, we played a couple different clubs, but it wasn't anything that was gonna be a career or something that I thought would become a career or something that I would do, you know, for the rest of my life. It was more just like, I had not, I was going to school and, and working part-time and that was like my focus and I wasn't really doing anything as like a hobby or extracurricular stuff. And so I, I just, that's kind of what I participated in while I was in college and, and working. Okay. Anything else about the band or anything? That, that is all. Those are all the questions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Ramos. No problem. Have a good day. You too.